You have no idea how delighted I am to work in tandem with you. True, I have no idea. Better times approach, Geralt, you shall see. I trust you're not bothered if I refer to you by name. Not at all. Wonderful, I feel we shall become great friends. That remains to be seen. Shake my hand, Geralt, to mark the beginning of our friendship. Uh, don't worry, I've no poison needle up my sleeve. I believe one can learn much about a man from his handshake. Learned anything? You have the handshake of a warrior. Strong, decisive, dominating. You're the conquering type. The kind women love. I was asking about the curse. Ah, oh, of course. What would you like to know? Have you dealt with curses before? I've cast a few in my time. One victim sprouted donkey's ears in a tail, another's house burned down. Nothing too serious. Shame. Have you removed curses, lifted spells? Never had the chance. But I mastered the theory involved. Best in my class at the Magic Academy. They don't teach you about curses like this one at Banard. Glevis's curse is a fourth level blood spell. It's also known as the Archmistress's curse. A misnomer, for they've been cast by generally crazed mages or priests, not necessarily women. You've done your homework. Did you notice that not all the specters were aggressive? Hmm. Most would disappear when we neared them. I think the curse's power corrupts the ghosts of those who died in the battle, turning them into draugers. Draugers? Is that some professional name you witches have for specters? They're demons, Deathmold. Draugers are demons of war that arise on battlefields where the fighting was vicious and the slaughter particularly bloody. They are hatred and bloodlust in condensed form. The name matters little. Do you know how to rid us of these draugers? A silver sword's enough to send them to their rest. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will appear. The soldiers' ghosts are the key. If we could reverse the tide of the battle... Don't delay. Grab your sword and start reversing. I'll need some symbols of war that belonged to the soldiers who perished here. Artifacts symbolizing hatred, death, courage, and faith. They have to be magically active and linked to those who died. Without them, I won't be able to summon the ghosts. Well, I've no idea how to find them. Apart from which, I know little about war symbolism. I'll deal with the artifacts. I have another job for you. Explain this blood curse to me. An ordinary blood curse is a trivial thing. You let a little of your own blood. Best done at midnight, surrounded by lit candles. Sabrina had a whole pyre around her. Tell me about Glevisig's curse. Read about it for yourself. I have all the necessary literature. In fact, you only need the great encyclopedia of curses, spells and prophecies. And a, a volume compiled by Tessard of Rees and Margarita Loantil, Masters of Magic on Curses Selected Writings. Quite a tome. Are you sure Sabrina cast the curse? Positively. Curses of this kind are cast rarely. There have only been six confirmed cases. How many confirmed cases of their being lifted? One. By a team of mages led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, whence came the curse's other appellation. In any case, Sabrina Glevisig was part of that team. Small world, and one that just got a little uglier. That's not all. The curse that Francesca and Sabrina dealt with was meant to end the lives of the last of the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. It was cast by Scarlet Rodelega, a very talented but completely mad man. A prophecy and an activator were also involved. I see. Sabrina just stole her curse from this Rodelega. Precisely. Beside which the king himself and a company of armed men witnessed her casting it. We've got our comet and murder. What about the coins? We have those as well. Not enough for you. No. Why do I get the feeling I've stumbled on some shameful secret? A state secret. If you don't tell me, your head of state may soon lose his head. There's a plot afoot within the military. Those involved share a symbol, a square coin adorned with a fish. Let's do this. I shall in no way hinder your investigation and you will reveal to me anything you learn. Should I happen upon anything related to the curse? You'll let me know. So be it. Why is Henselt still breathing? He killed the priest. Why didn't he burst like a ripe tomato under a dwarf's heel? Perhaps Glevisig wishes Henselt to wait for imminent death. I don't think so. I know a few sorceresses. They're mean, true, but they also want results. Sabrina cast the curse while roasting at the stake. 
Not the most comfortable circumstances. I suspect she botched something. Are you suggesting Hensel may be safe? I'm suggesting he could be saved, provided we cut him off from the heart of the curse, the Battle of Spectres. It's the weakest link. How could we do that? I don't know yet, but I suspect I could summon Sabrina's ghost and force her to free Henselt. First, I need to learn the circumstances of her death. If I'm not mistaken, you need blood to cast a blood curse. Precisely. Unachievable otherwise. Sabrina was bound to a wagon wheel. Where did she get enough blood? She put a spell on a soldier who gave her a coup de grace. It was easy. The minds of some soldiers are so uncomplicated. Sabrina needed one of them to strike her, shorten her suffering, but complete the curse. However, this is where she erred. That whore performed miracles, gathered the power, got the prophecy and activator right, but fell flat on her face on the simplest thing at the end. Don't get so excited. She chose a fool, a bungler. I heard he thrust five times with his spear, yet the witch's soul would not quit her corpse. There was no one guarding the pyre? It was one of the guards the sorceress chose for the task. His comrades were irate. He spoiled the show for them. The king was no longer anywhere near. In any case, blood flowed and the curse took root. Yes, but the harlot got her due. You're gonna help me, Deathmold. Of course, as the king ordered. Listen up. You'll do the paperwork. I get the feeling you like it. I'll need a number of protective runes to summon Sabrina's ghost. They need to detain the sorceress's ghost and anything else that enters this world with it. Find something for me in your library. The runes need to be easy to produce. I haven't seen any artists around here. Apart from that, the Draugrs are likely to begin their forays in search of Henselt. When they leave the battlefield, they'll grow weaker. Your men should be able to handle them. Just equip them with silver-plated weapons. Henselt could also use something silver to defend himself. Over the entrance to his tent, hang a wreath of sunk foil and fool's parsley. Inside, a fire fueled by juniper branches must burn at all times. Where will I get so much silver? Melt down your collection of pots for all I care. Just get it. Those aren't pots, they're silver vases of Nazaya. Last of all, give Henselt an instructional talk. Explain that I'll need him. And what will you be doing? Drinking ale and fondling the camp women? There's that, yes. Though I'll also prepare to summon Sabrina's ghost and figure out what I need to send the fighting specters back to the afterlife. I'll drop by and give you more work as I learn about this curse. How did you divine that you might recover your memory by lifting the curse? I don't like people poking around in my life. Learning about others is my job. I must know the secrets of all who wish to approach the king. I've no problem admitting I like the work. My past has nothing to do with Henselt. You don't know that. Do you know why I have no friends, Witcher? Because sooner or later I learn all their secrets, which is followed by interrogations, torture, executions. Just leave my past alone. What do you want, Witcher? Did you participate in the battle? I did. And I fought. But I'd rather not go into it. The spirits of those who died in battle are now in combat on that field. They kill each other and change into nasty creatures called Draugrs. Adernians, Kedwenis, even your comrades. I want to help them, but I have to know what happened during the battle. Oh, the plague. Listen then. The fighting started in the afternoon. The Dun Banner was first to attack. We were ambushed, cut off from our main unit and devastated. Bloody scouts and Sabrina Glevesic, who was supposed to mine the battlefield. By then, the battle was in full swing. Wherever you see those damned furrows, people fought there. The Adernian lines faltered a few times, but we couldn't crush them because of Selkirk. Yes, we had the visitor. They had Selkirk of Gullet. The invincible White Knight, Edern's finest swordsman. Wherever our forces gained the upper hand, he'd appear and reverse the fighting's course. Then, Vandergrift himself went into battle. He met Selkirk in the middle of the melee. It was a battle of titans. 
In the end, the Visitor hacked Selkirk and sliced the White Knight from his head to his balls. Then, death fell from the heavens. Lumps of burning soil flew through the air. The whole valley was on fire. Damned magic of a damned witch! I owe my life to Priest Crest, our chaplain. He led me out of the battle and went back for the others. He had a medallion that protected him against fire. He led everyone out, including the Adernians. But the flames got him in the end. What happened before the battle? We forded the Pontar on the third day after the Autumn Equinox. The Adernians were waiting for us, formed up in a long line at the foot of those hills. I remember the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg, Gullet. Knights, armoured infantry, peasants, the Vergen Dwarf Regiment. All save the King. They numbered more than 5,000. General Vandegrift, commander of the Kedwenis, had less than 4,000, including the elite bearheads, armoured troops from Ard Kareig, and the famous White Foxes of the North. And ourselves, the Dun Banner, veterans of Brenner, hated by the Adernians more than the plague. But above all, we had Vandegrift the Visitor. Maybe he was a bastard, but he knew war like nobody else. Do I have this right? You served in the Dun Banner? Did indeed. Henselt's never commanded a fiercer group of warriors, and he never will. If not for us, there would be no victory for the North at Brenner. We carried the day. I didn't see the Dun Banner in the camp. And you won't. The unit's no more. Ensign Eckhart Hennessy carried the standard into battle for the last time three years ago. Glevisig's magic? Worse. The Adernian troops, the bastards. The Dun Banner, the pride of Kedwin, lost its standard and almost all its men. The Visitor refused to send us reinforcements when we were cut off. The Dun must prevail. It's been in worse shite than this. The Dun will be all right. Seven Adernians to each one of us. We had no fucking hope. Two hundred men went into battle and less than seventy came back. But that's not all. Only a few survived to this day. The boys couldn't handle it. Suicide, firewater, fistech. A few became highwaymen. They ended up on the gallows or in ditches. Memories can also kill you, and soldiers don't always deal with them well. I have to find that standard. I heard it lies in the catacombs neath Vergen, alongside my mates. Hey, if you're thinking of going there, I ought to give you my beaver skin cap. That's its rightful place. Did you see the duel between Saltkirk and Vandergrift? From a distance. At the time I was on that hill, and they were somewhere over there. The field used to be as flat as a table. It was their second duel. Earlier, in peacetime, they'd met at a tournament in Ard Kareig. Selkirk won then. Vandergrift's sword cracked and the visitor had to yield. After the tournament, he had a new sword forged by Kedwin's best mages and swordsmiths. That's how Loathen came to be. I think that means hatred in the Elder language. Pretty pretentious. They say a sorcerer cast a spell on the sword and told Vandergrift the blade wouldn't crack as long as he remained invincible. The mage got fifty lashes and was the last to mention any such nonsense. Who has Vandergrift's sword now? When the Sea of Flames died out, the looters ran amok. They found Selkirk's chain mail, which survived somehow. Maybe it was magical too. Vandergrift's sword went missing. The boys in the camp claim the female dragon slayer has it, but I wouldn't even try talking to her. Who's got Selkirk's chainmail? Uh, a certain Vincent Trot. Low nobility, in the army since forever, a greedy bastard. Where can I find him? That's a problem. Deathmole wanted him arrested after they found a square coin on him. Some of the officers and noblemen want to get rid of the Black Ones. They don't like how they lord it around the camp, even though the King talks to them. Those coins are their sign, the stupid bunch of plotters. Anyway, Vincent's a swashbuckler. He thrashed Deathmold's people and disappeared. Those with the coins won't say a word because they're scared of Deathmold. Thanks, Civic.
There's a soldier by the inn selling scraps from Sabrina's execution site. I know. The damn quartermaster. This business of his muddles the minds of the soldiers. Suddenly, everyone believes a splinter in your pocket will protect you in battle. Half wits. After what happened here three years ago, it's no surprise they're terrified. I'll tell you one thing, Witcher. In combat, I can count on my shield, my armor, and my comrades, if they still live. Many of those boys will die in Vergen, even with their pockets stuffed with mystical splinters that cost a silver piece each. I want them to be afraid. When steel hits steel, I want them to be alert, damn it! If they're dumb and put their trust in rusty nails and ashes, they won't have a hope in hell. I heard there's a man living outside the camp known as the Visionary. Ever met him? The soldiers talk about him, but I've never seen him. If I ever do, he'll regret that he fooled my people with all those superstitions. Did you see Sabrina's execution? Wish I could have, but only the fifth company was sent there. She deserved it. What she did to the boys. Believe me, I've seen a lot of monstrosities in my life. My brother died during a coup in Rhind when a mage boiled the blood in his veins. Also, I once saw a soldier raping a dead elf woman. But three years ago, people melted like lead. Something you can't forget, Witcher. From what I can see, you and the men love your king. He's like a father to us, really. Comes around from time to time, chats it up, pats you on the mug. Remembers our names, too. Though you got to earn that in battle. Been so distinguished three times already. Pride myself on it. I'm sure it's a great honor for a humble soldier like yourself. Last time it happened, we was on the march. Some peasant poisoned his well. A few of our lads died. Many others got sick. I paf... Pas... Pafficide that village. We hit them so hard, we even struck fear into our own boys. They went without a row for two days, and the king was very pleased. He came around, gave me a friendly punch in the gut, laughed, and said, You are one true son of a bitch. If you'd not been born among swine, you'd probably be king. That's how he is. Humane and all. He's really got a heart. So long. Girls, prim yourselves. How can I help you, handsome? I wanted to talk. We're no strangers to the art of conversation, but it'll cost you just as much as a good plough. Sounds all right. Ask away, then. What would you like to talk about? Anything interesting going on in the camp? Soldiers are scared shitless, what with this battle approaching. They'd rather drink themselves silly than let us honest whores make some coin. Is that interesting? I doubt it. Not raring to fight, are they? They might have been eager at first, but the longer we sit here, the less lively they become. Fighting's like ploughing. Lust for one, and you lust for the other. Well, how... I'm looking for a whore. We've got plenty of them, but you'll need to show me your coin before you choose one. We all have our principles. Well, these are my girls. Choose, white-haired one. I've heard good things about Whistling Wendy. At your service. My prettiest girl, tis true. Fool soldiers gave her that stupid nickname. Tidy yourself, Wendy. Witcher on the way. Come on in. Bastard. Oh, 
Hello, wit. How can I? What do you desire, my hero? I want your smile to part the gates of paradise. Come with me. Make love, not war. Vincent Trot, you're a little elusive. Here alone? Not wise, Witcher. We'll see about that. I'm wearing Selkirk's armor, you know. Pretty much renders me invincible in a duel. Give me the chainmail and I'll forget everything. Whistling Wendy, your plot. I know about the coins. You're Death Mole's hound. I don't trust you. You don't need to. I just need the chainmail. Not interested in anything else. I'm to remove it. And hand it over. Then you'll be on your way. And all will be well. Doesn't sound like my kind of story. How's this instead? I'll kill you, take your swords and gold, and the gods will rain good fortune upon me for ridding them of a filthy mutant. Die. Spy! Kill him! Yeah! Ah! 